Hello and uh, welcome to our webinar on real-time machine control with PC-based uh, automation solutions. My name is Galen from Advantage Singapore, and I'm excited to be hosting this event. Here is the agenda for today. First, we'll be introducing on soft PLC, followed by the architecture of modular controllers and their successful cases. After that, we'll be having a quick demo and we will also be sharing with you our starter key prom package promotion. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the chat window. We will address them during the QA session later. Now, let's invite our first speaker, Humber Chen, to introduce Soft PLC. Over to you, Humber. Okay, let's begin. Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Humber. I'm the product manager from the ESACAD and IO system of uh, Advantech. I'm so glad to be here sharing some new product concept, which is different from the previous image of Advantech. For the past decade, we Advantech focus on previous image, uh, focus on developing iOS devices and uh, uh, HMIs, and our most famous product, everybody may know as our industrial PC. So uh, start from a few years ago, one idea come into our mind. Why cannot we build up a whole new product series which can leverage IO module and industrial PC? So that leads to our topic today, the AMAX series product. This product series lead with our programmable automation controller, or we call it EAC or PAC. And we develop this whole new outlook for the industry PC controller and giving it a new feature which can install local, digital, and analog IOs. And we absorb all our, our experience and advantages from PC and devices. Make this product series can expand like peer bus IO and peripheral IO and plug in a uh, slice IO like digital, analog, even functional or communication IOs. And this IO could be distributed, installed to meet the requirement of every application of industry. Uh, this concept is not only for hardware part, um, but a software part will bring some idea and benefit with our new AMAX series product. Back to 90s, we don't think industri industrial PC come with embedded Windows or Linux OS or real-time control solution. Until now, this concept is already different. We find a way to did it and how we did it. The answer is codices. By implementing codices control engine into our EAC, it can optimize the PC to be a real-time, runtime system and do what EAC can not do like PLC for all time. And furthermore, due to PLC was a PC-based platform, customer now can do data collection, transmission, and all automation control tasks at this control itself. So what we told is an IT and OT integration which empowered by Codices H control solutions. From this concept, you can see that there are also cloud and uh, IIoT solution, which integrated our EAC with Advantech Wise Pass or Device on BI serv service. Open the door for an automatic equipment or the factory which need IT and OT overall management. So uh, as we can see, the automation controller can be separated into three types, which goes to DCS and PEX, or we call it IPC, and the PLC. <clears throat> These three, uh, there are some players that you may already heard or you may be familiar with. And these three types of controller combine with SCADA and HMI to do, build out almost all automation structure, which we simply split into two kinds of scope. The discrete automation, which uh, 
may need an immediately control and feedback. Like with that real-time control ability to make a single equipment running for accurate or precise production. And the process automation, which may need a bigger and a more complex control structure and needs lots of I.O. to integrate all fields and equipment together. So what we did is to pr provide the control solution from a single unit to whole factory. This solution not only includes real-time control and even manage our equipment and whole product line. But how, we, how do we begin? In my opinion, everything starts from the understanding of our hardware and software. And so later on, my college uh, will show you more benefit and information about quality control software and our Advantex uh, uh, MX series controller. And thanks and hope all, you, all of you enjoy the following content. So, uh, Luis, hand over to you. Uh, thank you, Hamper. Uh, this is uh, Luis Ng from the Avante Singapore. I'm happy to be participate in this uh, webinar. As um, Hamper has been sharing, Avante has many years in the onboard level design. So, this is the time where the Avante has been moved on together, integrate this uh, IPC and the soft PLC together and it's integrated the IT and OT solution as well in one uh, device. So you can be help out the client save as more space as possible in your control cabinet. As you can see, there's a benefit of the, our edge control is uh, reduce the schedule, means uh, you have been uh, able to use a different kind of language in the PLC programming for do the con control programming. You also have the, this uh, edge control provide the real-time communication with the field device through the field bus. And you have this uh, dynamic integrate assisting or generate code, which you can be integrated together and call in the IEC. And it's also convenient in the software interfacing as the device itself able to be communicate with the third party of the software by the PLC handler. And you have, have, have this uh, uh, develop your motion touch without the leaving your family logic control developed environment. And the last is the easy integration, the operation technology data with the information technology control through the OPC UA, MQTT, and open database connectivity for the server linking. So over here, I'd like to share the uh, Avantech MX658 is uh, um, the yeah. X control together our this uh, soap PLC and is allowed to be upgraded with this uh, soft motion control solution. The hardware itself is come with the i7 and i5 uh, with the Celeron as well. The client uh, design and query, and you have the this uh, uh, runtime kernel to be built in together with this uh, uh, MX658. Beside that, the advantage also the funder this uh, target that means a uh, local visualization as well uh, as a uh, web visualization together. So to let user is convenient to do the more uh, advanced uh, control and monitoring by the device itself. And it's uh, allowed to be have uh, uh, the internal few bus to be communicated by the, this uh, intercat solution with the, our advanced intercat remote IO. So as you can see, uh, it able to be uh, slot in the this uh, remote IO at the beside of the this MX658. Beside that, it can be distributed as a link up with the distributed uh, remote IO through the this uh, LAN port. So there's a flexible expansion and the connection for this uh, MX658. For this uh, MX637, I would say that is a more uh, uh, compact solution. There is a onboard DITO for the simple control. Uh, so user, you can be uh, do the simple software logic with this uh, MX637. It's come with the uh, easy data access and the real-time industrial inter internet control protocol, as well as flexible expansion and connection. I would like to introduce this uh, ultra compact control platform, so-called uh, MX657 with the codices ready. So it's come with the, uh, as you can see from the, this uh, form factor, it's come with the terminal port ready for the various 
serious interface communication like can open and the more bus. It's like the user easy for the wiring connection and it's able to be direct communicate with this uh, ultra compact control so that it can be immediate to the testing. As you can see, the size is uh, very slim and small and it comes with the memory 4 gig DDR and the storage eMMSC TLC 64 gig. The scalable of the embedded system is on DIN rail. That means we can uh, direct uh, slot in our this uh, MX5000 slide I.O. module beside this uh, MX5570. And it is up to maximum 10 expansion without the additional MX uh, power module. If let's say the user would like to be expand more than 10 units, then you require to be slot in, in between the smart with the smart power input module so that you can be expand more uh, uh, this uh, remote I.O. If the edge control soft motion and CNC is able to be upgraded from our this uh, MX series, as you can see, our HQ have been done the testing with the MX658 so that it can be controlled up to 128 axis with the 100 millisecond uh, cycle time. As for the MX637 and 657, it can able to communicate with up to 32 axis. So how Codicy solution is provided the benefit for our client? As you can see, it's come with the IEC 61131 programming language. So it's come with the instruction list, structure text, data diagram, function life diagram, and the sequential for chart. So the user able to select the suitable language for them to do the programming. Beside that, there's a database and cloud function to be bundled on this uh, uh, device. And you have this uh, local and the visualization. So you can have an uh, on-site machine operation and system monitoring with the multiple language support. And you have the few bus real-time control. So you allow to be import this uh, so-called GHD file, uh, EDS file and XML file. It uh, uh, depends on the which type of the protocol you want to be communicate with this uh, device. And you have this uh, remote web-based access. And uh, of course, the, what the customer very concern is that you have set time and the cost in order to be integrated this uh, control and operator panel by the codices. So this is the uh, element two skits, which uh, the visualization can be uh, let the user to do the design on the uh, graphic. So you can see there's a um, bundle of the uh, indication button, even have the, this uh, alarm management can be used for the user to do the design. This is uh, the upgrade feature with the soft motion and CNC robotic. So with our device, hardware device, with the RTE, Codice RTE, then the user allowed to be purchased the upgrade license so that it can have this uh, logic and motion control together in one IEC 61131 system. So it can be developed your motion task without the leaving your family logic control and under development environment. So as you can see, there's a come with the standard library function block to be used like acceleration, deceleration control, uh, drop move, uh, homing, velocity, motion, more and more. So this is a summary uh, for the MS control bundled with this uh, codicis solution. It's able to be, uh, it's come with the IEC 611 uh, programming and you have this uh, local visualization and there's a able to upgrade to soft motion and the view bus con real type control. For this page, we like to share that how easy for the user to do the project in the fine step. First, in order to more efficiency to create the application, so uh, the first step is create and insert. Create the project module tree with the application module and insert the extension module. The second step, you configure the correct uh, PLC and IO configuration, and also with the IEC 61131 cross language for PLC programming. The third step, user able to use the visualization tools so you can do the design for the uh, this, uh, graphic user interface, even have this uh, alarm management set up. The fourth is you able to generate the application runtime so that to download on the disk controller. 
I would like to highlight that for the core disease, you're able to be do the simulation even without the hardware component itself. So you can test your programming um, in the first while, while you're waiting for the hardware to be received by yourself. Lastly, you can be executed and run the application. So this is the, the IT solution which able to connection with the ODBC. And it, as you can see, it's easy and fast way to log and get the real-time data. In the past, at the traditional way, the PLC will be shared this with the, uh, with the OPC interfacing to share the data to the data management. After that, from the data management through to the SQL server. But for the latest technology, our MS series is able to use this ODBC database agent to share the information direct to the SQL server. So this is the completing programming on controller, not middleware necessary. And it's a simplified the system architecture, saving cost for not additional hardware and software. And there's a normal OPC effect. Uh, simplify the database connecting configuration. Avantech also come with this uh, Codice Data Connect add-on value solution, so so-called ACDC. As you can see, there's a various device which you can be uh, install this uh, agent on the third-party PC, and you can pull all the information either a uh, simple or this uh, uh, memory. But by the same device itself. You also can be install this uh, ACDC library so that you can be share all the information direct to the cloud service. So it's a high speed data exchange by the shared memory. Use the same variable and syntax by the simple and the control data direct access to the cloud. So this is a so called add on value for the user to use our MX solution uh, product. So this is the ordering information. You, as you can see, 658, it comes with three different kind of series. Uh, it's, uh, the different is uh, i7, i5, and the Celeron. For the 637, it's an Intel atom, and the latest model 657 is Intel atom as well. So as you notice, uh, these um, all the model, it comes with the codices RTE, as well as the visualization, either local or web visualization. So you buy the one-time license, you will get everything but, but for this uh, device. I'd like to share, this is the Edge Control Flexible Intercat application. On your left-hand side, there's a line topology and style topology, which I believe many of the clients have been quite familiar. And one that MX model, have been using the Intercat solution. So you have the flexible to have this uh, cable redundancy for this uh, past topology, pre topology, and ring topology. As you can see, once a device is down, the MX module still able to be uh, getting the data from different uh, cable to, to pull in the information from this device. So we'd like to share. The upcoming, uh, I will say that it's going to be launched in the market, the control S control with the redundancy for process automation. This is the uh, very many clients like to be have this uh, feature when they select our MS module. So as you can see, the new future you will come with this uh, S control redundancy. So you have a two same more series of the MX module with the same project to be downloaded for both a uh, controller. And you have the this uh, redundancy intern connection with the correct configuration so that you can have a host standby for this uh, controller. Of course, not only the control redundancy, you also can be bundled with the cable redundancy to give you a perfect solution for the, those are uh, high uh, uh, design requirement. We have this uh, can open capability and the edge control redundancy as well. So this is the application uh, and the success uh, case we have been done in the past. As you can see, this is a food, uh, food and beverage industrial uh, decentralized control. Uh, for this one, we have this uh, MX637, all the this uh, distribution IO module 
communicate with the intercat interfacing. Uh, MX Sport A3 is uh, our advanced uh, distributed IO module, and beside that, it can be communicate with the Panasonic servo driver by the intercat solution, and be able to be share all this uh, data by the uh, Mobus TCP, OVC UA, and the MQTT. So you can be given a very good, simple solution to do the, this uh, operation management. Then second is uh, this uh, AGV machinery. And we have this uh, car wash uh, decentralized control machinery. As you can see, the MS module is able to be configured another different type of uh, this uh, protocol interfacing. For this, it comes with the inter interfacing with the can open and internet IP. So we have this uh, division IO and the item module, which come with the internet IP, so that you can communicate with this uh, elementary server driver in the same bus. So you save all, all the troublesome to uh, all, all the programming. Okay, we have this uh, uh, sent this Tesla centralized control factory. So MX658, yeah, to be controlled this uh, Fuji electric server motor with the Ethercat solution. And you're able to be used, uh, can open to control the inter inverter yeah, inductive motor. So this will give you the real-time dual fuel bus control with the less software development time and the soft logic control solution to re replace a mechanical cam with the electric electronic cam. And you also direct connect to the SQL Server database, not middleware necessary. So we would like to have this uh, demo session uh, on the, this MX658 with our CODC solution. I will hand over to Sherwin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sherwin. For today's session, my side, I will be share more on the uh, how to do the demo with the, our MX6580. Uh, I will be using is the Code 6 uh, IDE, right? So uh, this one is my simple architecture, right? So uh, for today's section, uh, I'm using is my laptop. Is the I will be installing the Code 6 IDE, right? So the hardware is the MX6580. Emacs of 658, and then is uh, I was using is two IO module. This two IO module actually is uh, they are using is Ethercat protocol. Second, the item I, IO module I'm using is the Adam 6160EI, is the Ethernet IP protocol, right? So this is the Ethernet IP uh, to be simulation, right? So I'm using is uh, three switch button. So each switch button will be trigger the tower light signal, right? So uh, if I press the uh, DI channel zero. I'm drawing is the uh, green color, so I, it will it will be trigger the uh, DO uh, sound light signal, the green color, and then individual you can be see uh, the next slide. I will share more on the how I will create the project and then the how to simulate all this I/O. So if you see from uh, this architecture, you will be see that uh, this is our hardware, right? So I'm using is the two lamp port. One lamp port is connecting to the our my laptop is the another lamp port is I'm connecting to the this atom. So the these two IO module actually they are using is that they will have a internal LAN web there, right? So the next step I will show uh, what I'm uh, I'm meaning is the what's the top LAN is the internal LAN tree web there. But right? before I start to move on the my software portion, I would like to share more on the about how the our hardware, actual hardware. So uh, now I'm using is the web, web, webcam, so I will share some information, hardware information to you, right? So, so this is the actual hardware, right? So this is the one I'm saying is the LAN one and LAN two, right? This one is the internal LAN I'm uh, I'm using is for uh, I/O module, right? This one is the hardware. So this is a three three button I'm using is the green color is the the, the channel zero I'm connecting to the channel zero, so the I'm using is the second button. I'm using connecting to the DI channel one, right? So I'm used to control for the double light signal, the uh, orange color. So I'm using is the uh, orange button. The that one will be to control the light, uh, double light signal of the uh, red color, right? This is all the hardware for my demo, right? So if you if you look, receive 
for the uh, our controller, right? So if you will be see that they will have a few LED indicator will be here, right? So you will be see from here. So when you power on this power LED will be on, right? So uh, SATA is uh, this. Uh, this is mainly for our internal hard drive. As long as the hard drive is the normal, you will be see that the LED will be flashing will be there, right? So because of the camera resolution, you may not be see very clear, right? So the run pattern, because the one is uh, my previous demo unit, Kodi 6 demo unit is running. So that is the reason you will be see that the LED is on, right? So um, our this hardware is supporting to uh, your power, right? Redundant power will be there, right? So if you, let's say, if you see that the LED, this LED, ERR LED is on, uh, it's mean that the one, uh, your power supply is have issue, right? So their design is the redundant power. So you have to be supplying power one and power two. You will be see that two power level will be here, right? So I'm using short, uh, these two cable. So I'm giving the same power to the two power supply. That's the reason you didn't see that the LED, uh, ER LED is on, right? So let's say sometimes if you are internal CPU, the uh, the overheating, this LED will be triggered. They will they, they will write down is uh, over temperature, right? So we do have another error LED. Uh, uh, error is the voltage. What's the meaning of the error voltage? The first time I do the testing for the, this hardware, right? So. Um, my power supply I'm using is uh, 19 volt. So I didn't check the data sheet and I just get the power. It seems that uh, this error LED is on. After that, I find out the issue is because I'm not using 24 power. Our power supply is that you have to use the 24 power. You cannot be used uh, like the normal, our atom is uh, travel to uh, uh, 30 volt. It's not like that, right? So this hardware is that they are designing is the 24 volt uh, DC power resupply. You have to need it. So the one of the last label is the for the battery load is uh, this is mainly for the our C, internal CMOS battery. You know that the, our controller is the PC base, right? All the PC base they will have a uh, 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 CMOS battery will be there, right? So there's the uh, this all the indicator you can do for the troubleshooting purpose, right? So um, if you if you look at from this hardware and the left side and right side, the left side you will see if you Check over this thing is the UFC that this is not this is just a label only. Okay, you have to see that this hardware, right? So if you look at the hardware, this is for the expansion for your communication module. If you want to be uh, if you want to expand your uh LAN module or the additional IO module or uh USB 3 module or any other module, this is the internal PCI bus web that this one is mainly if you want to expand for communication and additional IO. Uh, not IO module, communication module, you have to extend it at the left side. The right side is uh, our design is the, uh, you have to be add in the, the IO, IO module. They are, we are defined left is for communication, right side is for IO module. So based on the Lewis, the, the slide they did mention that some of the, our controller, uh, they, were, they were have a different kind of the combination. What I'm saying is the, now, based on the latest the module, if you want to be stepped on the I/O module, you don't need to be used the one of the 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 model we call the uh, power uh, power module. Power come with the I/O module. Is this this is the one you see in my my slide is the Amex five five zero one, right? So so if if you are using is the newer model, you may not be needed, but because but you can be uh, stuck in the uh, maximum up to ten. IO module because they only can be stand for the kind of power consumption. If for this module is that if you want to use the IO module, you have to use this module, right? So 5001 first. This one is the power with the IO and communication is come together, right? So you must use this module. So when you when you order or check the module, uh different kind of the controller, they will have a different kind of the uh, combination, you have to be really need to be take note this part. Okay. So, uh, this one is my hardware uh, introduction, right? So, uh, when one more thing is the when you receive the hardware, definitely you have to be 
connect to the, your uh, uh, your monitor. You have to be uh, uh, you, you have to be configured your specific IP for actual um, actual application, right? So uh, they will have an internal uh, default IP will be there. So if you want to know the actual uh, What's the LAN IP? How you want to set it? Definitely, you have to be used to connect to the monitor and then the uh, change all the setting before you start to configure your software. Right? This is the hardware part you have to do. Okay. So the next step is the uh, we want to be control this uh, controller. So we you, definitely you have need to be install some software. Right, so um, I, I I will share in my document in the this link. If you click the this link, they will refer to the, our uh, website. You can be able to download all the uh, all the requirement uh, requirement software. Right, so uh, definitely is um, uh, if you want to do the any kind of programming, they will need the ID. Right, this is the first step. You have to be installed Code Six ID. Right, so this is the one you have to. They will they have a few topic will be there, but uh, which one you need to be installed and uh, which one you don't need to be installed. Okay, I will explain a little bit today. Right, so first definitely you need to be install ID. This is the one you you didn't install. You cannot be able to configure your hardware. Right, this one one thing. Second is the you have to be install Avanti Code Six Development Add On Package. Um, if you expand this. Uh, the uh, uh, this the the view they, they will come up a lot of the um, uh, uh, a lot of the version will be there a lot um, a different kind of the uh, code six the version will be there maybe, maybe later I will uh, share more on this part right you have to add, uh, install uh, download and install this and on add on package because this add on package is uh, will be used for the Avante hardware. Uh, maybe some customer they are using is our Avante Adam 4000 series, 6000 series, and the Apex series and other hardware. So this is mainly for Avante hardware. That is the reason you need to be installed this add-on package, right? This two is that you have to be installed, right? User menu, I don't need to be installed for the user menu part. So the the fourth uh, the fourth one. Yeah, for if you are the user, you don't need it. This one is mainly for the, our support team, right? So uh, sometimes your image is crashed. We need to be uh, flash the image. You, you, we have to be run uh, your Code 6 license, all these things. Yeah, this one is mainly for Avante, the support team needed for this, uh, this one. So if you are the user, you don't need to be download and install it, right? So. This is the second one. The last one I want to uh, share is the Codis agent and data connect, right? So, uh, Louis mentioned to us is that our controller is not uh, like the standard traditional because they also want to be combined with the IoT and the other high level programming language. Um, uh, if you want to be uh, a few uh, a few example, right? If you want to be lock the data, right? So last time is. Uh, 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 if you're using is the traditional PSC, you only need uh, uh, in the middle where you have to run uh, some software and then the read the uh, read PSC data and write it in database, right? So now is the our one is the if you install Code Six agent and the data connect all this package, they uh they all the uh, database agent will be installed in the your controller. Your controller itself they can be directly. They can be able to write all this data, uh, log data to your uh, database directly. Uh, this is one thing. Second thing is the we are saying is the agent, right? So um, some of the customer, uh, they, they, they don't want to be logged, okay? They want to get the data uh, uh, from this one is, yeah, we will be provide the, the API and SDK for this agent. Uh, you can able to install the, the agent in your laptop and then the, use this, our API, you can be able to get all our data and information. You can do the read and write all these things. Okay, the last one is the uh, one of the function our agent will be support is the MQT function also will be there, right? So this is the uh, the main uh, uh, all the software you will need for your development. So 
Okay, one more thing is uh, I'm saying is I'm sharing the link to uh, our training material, right? So if you if you go to the website, you will be see this thing, right? So definitely, if you expand this thing, you will have a lot of version will be there, right? So uh, definitely, I will be recommend our customer to be choose correct version according to their hardware, right? So um, if you if you have a hardware, if you Lock into the your system. They will have a Code six runtime license will be there, right? So you will be see from here because the one is I did install the Code six in my laptop. So if I double click this one, um, because if you get the hardware, all the Code six runtime license they will come together, right? So you just go and check with the what is the hardware, right? My my because of this hardware I'm using is the Code six. The, the version is the 3.5.16, right? So I will try to download 3.5.16, right? So then install it, right? The same thing, oh, sorry. Uh, the same thing, if you, this one is the IDE, second one, you have to be install the package, right? So if you expand the, the this tree view, you will be see that, right? This is the, uh, the version. I didn't install the, the latest one because my hardware is only support to 5.6.16, right? That is the reason I only install this one. So after you install the IDE on your desktop, right? Uh, you will be see the discount kind of icon will be here, right? If you click on that, you will be see this is the version. You uh, 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 your code six is uh, installed successfully, right? So this is a one of the part. Second thing is the next step. Definitely, we we need to be um, start our programming, right? So before we start to do the programming, yeah, uh, you may have your hardware or you may not have your hardware. So if you don't have a uh, actual hardware, because our IDE they will not make the any charges. You can be download and install in your laptop, right? So. Um, if you want to be simulate and run whether your program is working or not working, yes. If you want to be write your uh, process flow, yes, you can able to write it. You can able to simulate it, even though you don't have a without hardware, right? How you want to do that? You just go to um, after you finish installation. Uh, they will have a Code Six folder will be there, right? So you can run. Uh, code six control because the one is you need the controller, right? You don't have a, a control. This is the simulator, right? So, which uh, software you want to test it, right? So you can able to uh, run because this this trial run they are able to run about two hours. Because uh, if you want to be still uh, uh, after two hours they will stop the service. You just uh, close your service and rerun it, right? You just Try to run your uh this code six file version. They are able to run about two hours again, right? So, so for my my hands on part is my demo. I'm not. I have an actual hardware, so I don't need to be uh run this simulator. Okay. So after you double click this one, this uh interface will be pop up. Right. So before we do that, right, we download. And we download two things. One is the ID. Second one, you have to be uh, download the add-on, right? After you install the uh, ID, you can even run it. But you are where your add-on, how they will be update all this uh, add-on to your Code Six, right? So they will have the tools. You just click to the tools, and then they will have a device repository. You just click the device repository. Um, you can be install install the our add on add on this one, right? The same thing. So let's say the um, we do uh, we also do share is that if you want to add in the different kind of the protocol, right? So Ethernet IP you have to be install EDS file, right? So this is also the same thing. You uh, if you want to be install EDS file because um, uh, I already installed the EDS file is the uh, EDS file is will be there. I'm not doing installation. You just uh, go to the inst uh, update and because the one is our Adam, right? So Adam, I just downloaded from the website. I get, uh, I I did install it, 
right? If you have your uh, different vendor, they also will be provide different EDFR, right? You just go to the tools and repository and uh, do the installation before you do and start anything, right? So this is the requirement, okay? Uh, second step is uh, we, we need to be, uh, okay, I will just refer to my next slide, okay? This is my process demo flow, what I need to do, right? First step, I need to be create a project file, okay? Second, I'm using is, um, I'm using two hardware, right? Two IO module, I would say that two IO module, two hardware. One is for the uh, Itaka IO, they are using in, in, internal bus, right? Their internal bus they are using is the Itaka protocol. The second one is the internal IP, right? Internal IP, they also consider as a remote um, uh, IO, uh, IO module, right? So I'm using is two protocol, right? So that is the reason um, I'm using this hardware to uh, do the, to do that test, okay? So we just try to do for the first thing, okay? Create a project. So this is the new file. You just create a new project, right? So um, for me is um, I always try to be put in the. Uh, I'm not using the default because to be easier to find out where my uh, all the project file is will be there. I always pray, put in my desktop, right? This is the. Um, I just go and do for the correct directory for my all my testing. I just I will be um, I will put in a, this demo folder, right? I'm using this demo folder. The project name is uh, I will put uh, demo. Mm, today is uh, 20, 23, Yeah, this one is my project name, right? So the same thing. Any programming, any hardware. If you want to write the programming, this is the step. You have to give the directory and uh, create the project file, right? The second step is um, they will take a while to, to do a compilation, right? So, um, so the if the the this side is coming, you are, we need to be choose which device we, we want to be communicate and download our program, right? So, um, for this hardware is the not supporting for the uh soft motion so uh their runtime license is avantage controller i'm using is the 64 bit rte is the just a runtime controller psc controller they are not combining with the, the soft motion logic because different license you you have to choose the correct the part number so for for easier to be for my set itself um I mostly is using is high level programming language. There's a reason today my section I'm not using is the letter. I'm using is the structure test to show is uh, all my project flow, right? So, so programming language I'm using is the structure test. Okay. So this is the project file. So they will be do that all the. This is the hardware you will be see right. So, um, this is our controller. So. When you are first step, you just double click this controller. We have to be make sure whether hey, we are. It seems like the it's okay. I uh, because of my previous testing, I'm choosing the correct gateway. You see now, uh, the ID is uh, after you install the IDE, you will be see not just the icon. All right, so they will be install this. This is the middleware gateway. They will be communicate IDE. Uh, they will go through the gateway or the program. They will be download to actual hardware. Right, this one is the IDE and the gateway will be in the same system. Right, so you as long as you set, you see now based on my this architecture, I. This set the, all the IP is correctly. So the IP I'm I'm setting to be the uh to be this LAM one. I'm connecting to the my laptop, right? So this one I'm setting is the 192.1.1.1, right? So this one is 10 dot uh 10 dot 10, right? The hardware is the 10.0.1, right? Based on my architecture, right? So I did I did labeling all the properly. So if you try to scan this thing. Right, this is the hardware. Sometime, um, sometime if you go through the different network, they will be 
uh, block certain team, if you try to bin, you may not be able to bin that because um, our previous the hardware, uh, Amex, the OCV is that we're using is the Win 7. Normally, it's the Win 7, it should be okay. Let's say if you're using is the Win 10, this hardware is the Win 10. So you, uh, eh, I cannot be scanned the hardware, even though I set uh, the correct IP, sometimes maybe the firewall block, and then uh, if you want to try to pin, ah, I, uh, the, I, uh, there's no return value. Uh, you didn't see that any uh, pin is successful. Maybe because Win 10, our default, uh, their security thing is that they are not allowed to pin, right? If you have to, uh, if you want to pin in the Win 10 with the new hardware, come with the Win 10, right? So you have to be, go to the firewall, the setting, you have to be enable, uh, file and sharing IP, uh, uh, they will have the I, IVMC, uh, the file, you have to be enabled it. They were allowed to be pinned, right? Now I did uh, I did test previous settings because I don't want to go through very detail uh, how I did set it in the controller, right? So you, as long as our IDE ticket able to scan this uh, actual hardware, right? You just update that. So, and press okay, you will be see that, okay. As long as you see the gateway is running well, right? You are choosing correct gateway. Yes, you are, uh, uh, the hardware itself, they are able to detect that. So it's mean that they are communicating, right? Our ID, our um, our uh, laptop, they can able to scan the actual hardware, right? So they, they can able to scan it, right? If you want to do this test, you just try to, we, we are not doing anything, right? So we just try to combine. Uh, if you didn't see that any error, so you see uh, error is zero, right? This mean is, uh, uh, Everything is working fine based on our current stage. Okay. Um, so we have done the project file. So we can able to scan our, our hardware. So the next step, what we need to do, right? The thing we have done creating the project scan. So we will try to add the device. Okay. So I will, if you, because all the hardware is all the IO, they will be considered under. Uh, not under the application. They are not actually running, right? They are not actually running. We, if you want to be add in, so we have to be add in the device. So you just select the controller and right click and add device, right? So um, I'm at first I'm try to I'm try to uh, scan and configure this module, right? So this Amex IO module they are using is the Ethercat Internet Bus. I will show to you where it's the inner bus. So you just expand the free uh, uh, free burst, and then um, our protocol I'm using is the internet. So so you see now, uh, our controller is is try to read the data, try to do. So they are doing is the master tab. So we choose the uh, internet master, and then add device. Because they take some time, right? So uh, you will be see this is the internet master, right? So you see now. We are creating the connection, so we have to be defined that uh, uh, this internet communication, which LAN port we are using, right? Based on our hardware itself, we will have a three LAN port. Three LAN will be there, right? If you double click this one, so they will be find. Uh, they will be ask you to uh, source address is uh, which internet IP uh, um, uh, 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 physical LAN you will be using. You just go to the click block blocks. You have, they will have a tree, right? So, if if you if you look at for the this actual hardware itself, you you only see that the land one and land two, okay. Land one, land two is the the name given by me, right? So, when you receive the actual hardware, you you will not be see that the land one, land two, uh, internet in the cat. Maybe I need to highlight this thing, right? So, hey, Sherwin, you did mention that you will be see that land one and land two. Uh, Ethercat tree because the one is uh, I just uh, rename it to be the specific LAN. So uh, LAN one, I'm I'm connecting to my uh, uh, laptop, right? So for program downloading, LAN two is I'm connecting to the uh, Ethernet IP module. LAN three is connecting to our Ethercat I/O module, right? So our communication is using Ethernet uh, uh, Ethercat. Right, it doesn't land tree, right? I just choose the correct land. So we have defined that this one there. So we will use this land pop to 
communicate with our I.O. Right? So, so you see now, we only uh, define that we will use the LAN tool, right? So, oh, so, oh internet LAN, sorry, not the internet LAN. So we need uh, to be at in this module. But for, for Ethercat module, they will have one function. Uh, you don't need to, oh, you have to, oh, sorry, you have to add in one more thing. So you have to be, add in is, uh, uh, okay. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. No need to be. Uh, no need to lock in. We just uh, we just compile so we can scan the module. Okay. So I try to uh, lock in and try to scan all the I/O module. You no need to be manually add in. So we need wait a while. So when you want to be scanned, you have to lock in. We are not running the program, right? So. We just right click and scan the module. Right, so you have even scanned these two modules. Okay, so uh, I'm using um, for this one, I'm not choosing which device, I just export to be the all the module to this one, right? So you will be see from here. So if you, because my button, I'm connecting, button three button is connecting to the second module. Right, second module is the Amex 5051, right? So I need to be, make sure that the, this wire connection is working. The, the, uh, the IO module is the receiving any signal, right? So we can do the test, okay? You just double click this one. You just go to the IO mapping, right? So you see now, you will not be see all these things. As long as you see all this configuration setting, you cannot be modified, you cannot be edited, right? So why? Because we are locking, you have to be lock off and configure it, okay? I lock off. So uh, now we are not writing the program. We just want to be make sure this IO wire connection is working properly, right? So you have to be one setting, you, you need to be take, take care, right? So you, this one is always update the variable. It means that the, even though you are not, uh, programming or, or as long as the, they will have a power, they, all the status they will be updating, right? You just enable it. So why do we make any changes? And then I will save, and then uh, you have to be combined. So we will do is the simulation, whether this IO is working. So after you combine, you need to log in and run, right? So this is a, this, this three step, we have to do it. Save. Compile, lock in, and run it, right? You just run it. So they will change the status. You will be see from you know, Only after you press the run button, all the, the indicator, all these things, as long as you, you must have to be see that all the green, it's mean that your device is ready, right? So if I, if I trigger, if I trigger channel zero, right? You will be see that the, Channel zero, DI zero is on, okay? If you press channel two, uh, is, uh, I'm pressing is the two, uh, second button is orange bar. You have to see that if I release it, it's two, okay? So for this training is that I'm using to tap the button. One is the latching, is you press on, they will be always on. Second one is uh, if you press and release this type, of the button we call is the moment tree, right? So uh, I'm using is the two different type of the button. So my when I when I'm doing for the uh, controlling the the tower light, I will use a different function. I will show to you how to do that. All right. So now we 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 can see that the Ethereum IO module is working, right? The next step we try to add in the our another module, another IO module. You have to be stop running. And then the lock off, the so system will be allowed to be add in two things, uh, allow him to do the configuration, right? So the same thing, you just click to your uh, uh, your device and right click add device. But this time we are not using is data IP, right? 
So we have to be at in the uh, Ethernet IP, right? They are running is the Ethernet uh, uh, Ethernet adapter. Okay, we have run it. Uh, secondly, is uh, you have to be at in is uh, uh, we are. Uh, you don't need to be at in this one, right? So we just okay. This one, the same method. When we configure the uh, uh, for the Ethercat Mastercard, we have to be select the LAN, right? So the same thing. If you if you want to communicate with the uh, Ethernet I/O module, uh, uh, Ethernet, uh, uh, Ethernet I/O module, right? Definitely, you need to be define that I'm using is the uh, LAN two to communicate with the Ethernet. IP right, so I need to be choose the correct IP right. You just double click this thing, double click Ethernet. So we will be saying is uh, we're using is the LAN two. Okay. Okay. So second thing is uh, you have to be they will have a function is uh, scanning. They also will be providing a scanning. So we need to be. Uh, at in the device, Ethernet IP is the scanner. You have to add in the scanner. This scanner, they will be scanning our I/O module, right? This is the one more step we need to do. Because, uh, okay, so you still need to be take a Y. So and then you just close it, close the window. So the same, the same method with the Ethercat when when you want to be scan the module, try to combine and lock in your application. So otherwise they were not able to allow to be scan this thing, right? You, you this thing, you uh, lock in first. And then because the, the scanning will be under internal scanner, right? Right click and then scan the hardware. You still need to wait a while. The, uh, they are trying to scan the, the actual hardware. So you will be see that the uh, Avanda Adam 6010 is the uh, the module is scanning. So uh, we were saying, okay, I will use this module to in, in my hardware. All right. So the same thing we can we can we can do the simple test whether our tower light the output signal is working or not. Right. We can do a simple test. But you have to you have to double click this one. Come to this one, right? We cannot do anything because everything is gray. Even though we are not writing the program, you have to be enabled that the signal is always on. You just you just lock off and configure the module, right? So uh, you have to set this thing. One more thing is uh, you see now. We we need to be make sure my hardware I'm connecting is uh, it will have uh, because the one is the output module they will have uh, a few channel will be there right my actual hardware I'm connecting to channel zero channel one and channel two to be a little far I'm not using so channel two and channel three and channel four right so I'm using is the three channel because we want to control three tower light tower light signal right so you see now. How uh, before you test, definitely you need to know that the where is their uh, addressing, where is the I/O channel from the software side, right? So uh, for the PSC, the standard one mainly is you will be see that I/O data T to O, uh, O to T, right? So you see now, let's say because of Avanta hardware I/O, they were used the T to O, the mapping, this kind of the mapping and naming address. As long as you see the person N I was not N, person I is for the input. They are doing the mapping. So for the output one is Q is mainly standard for the output used in the most of the PSC, right? So I'm not using the channel zero and channel one. So if I want to be simulate to be triggered, I have to be uh, trigger channel, uh, channel two and channel three. Maybe they are giving is the bit two, three and four, right? So, okay. Uh, we try to 
locking okay and then we will run it so we can we can simulate it whether our uh, our hardware our wiring is working or not right we just run it so you see that that this is the as long as everything is time to green it's normal if you see something is strange yeah you have to check the what is the issue right so you have to see from here right i want to take out my camera so our channel is three or channel two green is connecting to the channel two you have to be go to the prepare the value right you just click it so how you want to write it you just go to the debug and write the value or you can use the control f7 right so if you see my camera is this green led is on right so it's mean that our communication is working wiring is working channel is we are all the thing is correct right so okay uh i will i was move on my program right so i will stop the application and then lock off right the top one what i need to do right so i've done the create project i have done i have done for the other ad device i will do for the psc soft logic control so you see now uh, i'm not doing is the very complex the logic control i my, my, my program is that it should be simple right so because today is the first day um we are sharing is the all the basic thing right so in my programming is the i will i will use the some variable to to do the mapping with the io because you see right so um if you are if you if you're not uh you can use the all this address in your programming but if you do for troubleshooting will be um very difficult to say that oh uh q1 dot something something is which io is very difficult easier to be um uh, not easier to understand if your program is big uh uh it's, it's very difficult to do the troubleshooting so uh my always using is the i would declare my own uh, naming according to my project or wiring or the hardware i will give the name i will use this name to do the mapping with all this io right this one to be easier to uh do the programming do the troubleshooting all this thing right so um so all this thing we are uh, we are doing for programming purpose all the programming purpose we have to be um at in the module it should be under application right it should be under application right so uh to be easier to assess i will i always using is a uh, uh, global very well global very well mean is uh, uh if you look at from the programming they can be accessed from anywhere that's the meaning of the global right so um i will declare some variable i uh, know for this project i'm using three hardware a uh, uh, three channel of the di three channel of the do right so i'm i will be try to declare six variable so you just right click right so this one is under add object right so they will have a few function is will be there i'm using is the global variable right so um i just give the global uh v i a v l global variable i just keep the naming right uh this global variable name so they will have a few method you can do for the declaration right so uh, if you use the programming method to do the declaration you can use this format if you are familiar with the uh, um uh, uh most of the psc if you want to be declared all these thing right you can be insert all these thing you can be able to do that or so from here i'm using is the programming method i will show to you right so um to be easier to remember i'm using is the, the naming uh dio for tria dio i'm using is the a amx um you have to take one thing you cannot be use this one this one is one of the experience it seems like the some of the character special character is the used by the, the ide so that's the reason they are not allowed to use it okay so i'm using is the underscore uh the module is the 5051 right so for the module i'm giving is uh, uh 
di channel zero right so uh second thing is uh, this one is the variable second thing what is your variable data type right this one is the di do is the boolean right so it just is a boolean so normally is i always giving uh this value to the I, I would do mostly is I would do initialization, right? If you want to be write the value is the column and equal sign, right? This is the the uh, the format, the rules you have to be follow, right? So um, default, I would I would say that this is the false value, right? Ending must be semicolon, right? Similar to uh, if you're using C sharp, definitely you have to follow this rule, okay? Right. As long as you didn't see that the, any uh, red, uh, red line, underline is empty, is normal. Your program, uh, all the sentence is normal. Okay, I will show something to you, right? So if you have, um, we are using three variable, right? Three input, right? As long as you are using it's the same name or any issue they will give to you is the something like the things you, this, uh, this sentence is, is, is not correct. Right, so I'm giving is channel one, channel two. This is the three channel. As long as you see that, uh, you didn't see the any red color. This is normal. Right, so the next thing is uh, I'm using is the Adam uh, underscore uh, six zero six. Oh, sorry, six one six zero eternal IP. Uh, I'm giving is the do that's the one is I'm using is the channel two. Their data type is the boolean. Mm, initialize, I'm always giving the false value. Right, so this is normal. So I don't need to write all thing. Okay, control C, we just copy and paste. Right, so um, I'm using is the channel three and the channel four, right? This is a four. So I have done all the declaration, right? So this is six variable I can use for my application, right? So to be easier, I will do the physical I.O. and this variable I will do for mapping. Right? How I do the mapping? I just go, I just go to the actual module, right? This one we are using is the DI, right? How to do the mapping, right? So you see now, if you want to be do the mapping with the, your variable, you just go to the variable column, you just uh you just click, double click that one, double click is because our variable is under application, right? So under application. It's a global variable. Uh, you just move a little bit, and then I will do channel zero. I will do mapping with this variable. If you press the enter, you will be see that this address is met met with this variable, met with this I/O address, right? So when you write the programming, you don't need to be memorize all this number to all this thing, right? So to be easier for you to write your programming, okay? I will do all the mapping for. Sorry, uh, this one is channel one. Okay, this one is uh, uh, channel two. Do the mapping. Okay, I have done right channel uh, to be make sure. Oh, zero y and two right. Uh, this one is correct. I just save it. I will do the mapping for the, our do module. You just go to the actual do module. The same thing. You have to be come to the correct location right now our do is using channels two right so uh channel two double click you see um channel two do the mapping uh, to channel three channel four right so we have done all the mapping okay so we have done the mapping so we can see that whether we have any error or no error. We just go to the compile your program. So as long as you you didn't see that the any total number of the error is mean that your uh so far our program is working well. Okay. So the next step is uh, um I will try to create one function will be used on the actual programming, right? So Actual programming will be run under main task. We're not doing anything. We're not doing anything. We so far we have done just for the variable declaration, we just do for mapping, right? 
we want to do for a control process. My control process is the simple. If I if I uh, press this button, I want to be use the green because this green light because I trigger before. This one is always on, right? If I press this one, you want to trigger. If I press this one one time, it will be trigger. If I press the second time, this double light will be off. This one is the today the flow. I want to do it. So I want I will create the one function. Um, we call a function block. Actually, this was the if you're using is the programming. This is one function only, right? So what you want to, how you want to do? You just go to the application. You just right click under the add object. They will have a POU, right? This is the way you can create the function block, right? We just go. We just give the naming. Uh, I just give them the control tower light. Right, this is the name you can give any name. Right, this is the programming. Right, you can. I'm still using the structure test. So let's say, um, some of the fun. This one, if you write the programming, you will know that uh, you can put in argument. You can you can get if you want to create the uh, return value, you can able to do that function. If you need the return value for this time, we, we don't need the return value. Is we just make the simple control. Right, I I I, I didn't add in the additional. Uh, they are attribute in there, right? So I just create it. So you will be see that this is the program. This is the program we were using. This is our function program, right? If you want to the pro uh, programming, where you want to write it, you, you have to write it right here. So um, if you want to uh, write the command, you just less less similar to the C sharp. So you just give the. Uh, I just write uh, di zero trigger do zero right so um, do channel two it should be do channel right so I want to do the mapping because this is the latch button right I just need I just need to be mapping if your input signal is on you just trigger that your double light is on or off. This is the simple one, right? So we write the program. We want to be communicate with the I/O module, right? So we don't need to be uh, go and uh, see that they are addressing. We want to. We can use the global ticket version because we did the mapping. So we can use the this naming to do the calling and use it. So this is our program. So how you want to call the global? Right? You just press dot. You will be see that the all the data up here, right? So uh, the green color we are using is the DO2, right? Green color is the DO2. Because this DO2 is you want to write by something. So you just um, uh, mapping with uh, the DI channel zero. You just double click this one. The ending have to be semicolon, right? So uh, we we see is the whether we press the button, and uh, our tower light is on or off. Okay, we just save and then, oh, one more thing. Because we only declare this function. Actually, we are not running, right? So um, the, the, the thing is uh, they are function, the block, the block, their name is uh, similar to the our CW Blast programming, right? So you just create the function. Is called that we call that we create the instant. We are not creating the actual object and use it. So, uh, actual program is ran, uh, running under main task. So, this is our BSC program. This is a default one. I will be writing will be there, right? So, this is the, our control tower light function block is our instant. We have to recreate the object and run it. So, you you have to be create the object. We, uh, I just give the run process. The thing, your data type is what? Your data type is the this function name, right? You just you don't need to be type, you just right click, go to the input instant, right? Our uh, one is the fu function. You see now, we are now declaring for the data type. Our data type is not all these things. 
we are data type is the function block. We will use the this function block instantiate to be create the object. So this one is under structure type, right? Structure types. Our function is writing under application, right? This is the one. You just double click this one. You just ending with this one. You will not be see that. Uh, and the red uh red line will be there, right? This one is we created the our our uh, our object, so we can use it, right? So we create the function. It does not mean that this one is running. You can be run it. So you have to create the object, and then you can run it. So you just um you just run is the your actual object. Run. You don't need to run. Maybe you can write uh, run process because the our function is the programming. Right, this one is if you are writing uh, the high level programming, you will know that bracket is that they are calling the function. Bracket is they are calling the function. Semicolon just for ND. Right, so we save and compile. And the uh, locking and run. This is the all the proper process. Locking. So this time is the we were we were adding to run on the actual controller. They will have a few options will be there, right? So you see now, I'm not downloading because downloading takes some time, right? So I don't want to be uh, waste the, uh, your timing. So to be uh, to be run a little bit faster, I just run online run. So if you do for the actual project, if you can you have to choose either one and then uh, they will have one option will be here right upload book application is the when your application uh, pc is restarting pc is shut down pc is crash or anything they will restart it so if you want to uh, your application run automatically you have to be check this one right so now i'm uh, i'm not showing this simulation i just use the normal one right so i just okay Okay, we need we still need to wait a while. So, uh, and then we run it. Okay, that's uh, uh, I still waiting. That's one of the module is not up yet because uh, you have to see now is everything is up, all the green right. I just move go to here right so. Our doing is the when the green button, because the one is the green cable, right? When I press this button, now it's off, my right? So if you press this button, light will be on. If you press this button, right will be off, right? So this one is mean that our function block is working. Our uh, mapping with the, our DI signal trigger the output is working. But the next step is if I went to Press this one. This one is definitely I'm not pressing all the way. You, if you pressing all the way, you can be uh, on. It's on. You can do this kind of mapping. But my my simulation to be when I press one time, this uh this orange tower light will be on. If I press the second time, this tower light will be off. How how we do that? We just go. We just go and do it. Okay, the thing stop running and lock off. Right, so all the program have to be run under our function block. Uh, we just keep the comment. Uh, di one trigger d d o three. Right. Okay, we are trying to uh, another method. We are trying to use uh two function. One is the rising F function. When you press the button, only detecting button is pressed, they will trigger the power light. When the next time press the button, is turn off the light. That's why is the we are not pressing all the way. Even though you press all the way, we are not do detecting. So we were used for the uh, rising F big in function in our logic control right so uh we need to the same thing even though they write down the bit in function they also the same thing like the our instant 
you have to be um, uh, convert to the actual project, uh, not, not that project, the actual object, right? So I will give the rising edge, right? I just give the name, object, uh, what's the data type? Uh, I just right click, input instant, all the structure I'm using is the standard function block, right? They will be under trigger. You see now, um, you can be get some information because our application I'm using is the rising edge, right? If you double click this one, they they will be you will be see in the act your programming file. But before you do that, you can do two things, right? You can be see that how I should uh, use this program. What is the calling and use it? You have you can you just refer to the, this this one. They will have the documentation, this area, right? So you have to declare. So this is the one I'm declaring, right? I'm declaring, I yeah, saying the rising, right? Rising function block, I will be using, okay? When you do function call, this is their function call, the method. So this is the function, their return value, right? They will have a clock and the queue. Clock is the input signal, and the queue is for the their output, the function block. So um, to be easier, right? So if you write the programming, right? So I will, I will make it a simple drawing I will show to you, right? So if you write the programming function block, how you want to see that? Wow, this is the function block. So you will be writing is, uh, okay, when the input is trigger, right? I want to trigger the output signal, right? This is your input. Right, this is the input. What is the input? Input is timing they are using is the clock, right? This is the signal, you have to give it the name, okay? Uh, and then second one is that they will do process and return the value. This is the their return value. Right, so this is the return value. We will say that this is the output. Okay, right. So if you if your trigger rising at function plot is working, and then they will be triggered out return value. Right, this is the method. Right, so if you right click and go and do that. Right, so you see that I double click this one. Ending. Right, so this one we are saying is that we have created the object for the rising at function. So you, how this rising at function is riding, right? You just go to there. You just click the rising at function. And then is the DVC. You have to use the input. You see the variable input. What is the variable input? We call the programming, we call argument, right? So you, get, you, have, you, you have to give the, the argument saying is the uh, argument type is the clock. And then our argument type is the clock one. Wait, sorry, uh, semicolon and the value. The clock one we're receiving is uh, our input variable. Uh, our global is we are detecting for the second button. Second button is the channel two, right? This is the DI channel two or channel one, sorry, DI one, right? So if we detecting this one, this function got after processing this one, you are receiving is the trigger value, return value, right? Based on function one, what's the key value? So we will be, we will use one of the function is the, um, I will use uh, if checking for this process, I want to be talker, this output, towerized signal. I'm using is the simple one, right? When the rising is, is detect, I will trigger the output. Dot, their return value is the Q. Then I want to be trigger the output signal. Maybe I just copy to be easier. Um, I want to be trigger to our output is output tree. All right. So you see now, I I first time I press 
power light will be on. Second time I press, power light will be off, right? How I do that. So you, you see now, I write back to the output signal I'm not using. I just toggle their status, toggle in the, the uh, sorry, huh? toggle is, you, is the not value, right? If this is the sentence in the PSC, right? If you toggle the status, you will be see that this one will be, uh, when you press this one, it will be on. When you press this second time, signal will be off, right? This is the toggle, all the way we are doing, right? So you see now, only detecting the rising, when, uh, only you press the button, the rest of the signal, even though you press how long, they will not be care. Only they detect the red, uh, pressing the short time, they will be triggered, okay? Until you release and re-trigger it. So that is the thing. We only need to be triggered. Something is, uh, I will, the function is like that. Rising edge is the, when the signal is triggered, right? I will draw the simple one. Right, this is our on time, okay? Okay, I've moved a little bit because the time is uh, near. So I will show you that this is, this area is the rising edge. Only we are detecting rising function, we are talking the status, okay? I move on the my program, right? So I've done the program, right? And then the save, compile, lock in and run. So I will do a little bit fast. I, I worried I will be overrun, okay? Okay, I'll run it. Okay, I will show you the camera. Okay, we are. Uh, now it's ready. Is this one is my program I'm using is the ring and the green and the orange, right? If you press this one, will be on. If you press this one, will be on. If you press first time, release it, it will be on. If you press the second time, they will talk us the signal only, right? So uh, not the very complex one I'm, I, I'm sharing is the very basic function, okay? This is my ending part for this hands on demo. So I will pass it to Galen. Okay, after all the insight sharing and the demo sessions by our team, I believe all of you have a better understanding of the product itself. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you next time.